Alrighty, thanks for you guys that took to Facebook and the OTR Central Facebook page to post your Facebook Friday Q&A questions. You alright over there, Summer? Come here. You want to join in on the Q&A? Do you think the people want to see you? Eh, it doesn't matter if they do or not. You just give it to them. That's right. Come on, sweetheart. Mwah! My number one girl in the whole wide world. She just can't wait for Roman to get back soon. Alright, so I've got my little helper here. She's probably just going to sit here with me and be a pain in the ass and try and, I don't know, try and tuck under my hoodie. I don't know. But anyways, so let's go ahead and do this Facebook Friday Q&A, shall we? Steven Jacobson, should Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas have a sibling rivalry? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, you, you could do it, but the problem is, first off, is that, you know, if they don't have the same, like, surname or you haven't really addressed the fact that they're brothers, can you just really do that all of a sudden? I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't really work. I mean, you could in theory, but you'd have to do things a lot differently. You'd have to associate Bo Dallas with Life Family. I don't think it's something you need to go to at this time. Uh, let's see here. Tanner Barnett has posted a picture that is clearly a Photoshop of a dark, a darkened Jerry Stackhouse in a Washington Wizards jersey. I'm not really sure what you're trying to get at. If you're trying to get at what I think you're trying to get at, not funny, asshole! You see what I did there? You tried to do something, and I spun that shit in a completely different direction. You know why? Because it's not true. You only play for the Bulls, asshole. Anyways, you think that was funny or you think daddy's stupid? Eh, probably the stupid part, unless I'm feeding you. James McQuarrie, would you rather drink your own pee or watch Jeff Jarrett wrestle live for an hour against Sid? What a ridiculous and stupid question. I'm not drinking my own piss. I could watch Jeff Jarrett wrestle for an hour. Especially when you bring in the redeeming qualities of it being against Sid. Because then I'd be watching Sid against some Memphis mid-card piece of crap jobber jabroni for an hour. I'm picking a Sid match all day. See, the perspective that I take with that. Uh, Ciara and Crichton. What did you think of Hogan and Edge winning the tag titles back in 2002? Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, there are a lot of people... That were huge Hogan fans like me. And we could actually live, kind of live vicariously through Edge at the time. Be like, how cool is it to wrestle with Hogan? Get to win the tag belts with Hogan. That is pretty cool. And Edge knows damn good and well that that was pretty cool for him. And a nice little notch on the belt in his career. Not everybody can sit there and say they were tag champions with Hulk Hogan. Um, let's see here. Also, if you could have one legend and one young future star to win the titles, who would you choose? Uh, are you talking about tag titles? I'm assuming that that's what you're referring to. Uh, if I did that now, I don't know. I don't really know if I have one, honestly. I really don't. Chris Watson. So if Mercury and Noble are the new Stooges, which one eats Triple H's ass more? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question, isn't it? Um, since I was reminded of Mercury's face turn, maybe he could contort his nose in different directions uh, and he can get more done. Roto Rooter style. So I'll probably go with Joey Mercury. Morgan Thomas, if the WWE didn't have a racism problem, do you think Shelton Benjamin could should have been a world champion? I think he could have been. Maybe he should have been. It would have been a good story to do at some point in time, even if he didn't view him as a long term guy. Um, you know, was it just a racism problem with Shelton Benjamin? I don't know if it was just that. I mean, there's a lot of fear about the fact, oh, yeah, she's getting bored talking about Shelton Benjamin because she's no Roman Reigns or even Ryback. That's right, sweetheart. Um, yeah, you know, so he couldn't really talk on the mic. And WWE usually prefers their champions to be able to talk on the mic. Um, that's just a thing. Uh, let's see here. Excuse me. That was, yeah, that was Morgan Thomas's question. Chris Wazon's Question, other question, excuse me. Who would win in a match? Orton's ring boner or Steiner's math skills? I don't know if Steiner's math skills can technically take on a physical form, so I'll take the raging ring boner. Uh, Hector Thomas, what is your favorite Kane moment in WWEF history? Mine is when Kane shocked Shane's nuts. I don't think I particularly like that all that much. Now, not that I'm above that type of shtick by any stretch of the imagination. Um, favorite moment. I still always got to go back to his debut at Bat Blood 97. Tremendous. 
So well done. Uh, let's see here. And Chris Weiss on again. I guess he's he's jamming them in there, baby. A fuck Mary Kill, Ivory Miss Jackie, or Molly Holly. Um, I would fuck Molly Holly. I'd marry Ivory and yeah, not so much with Miss Jackie. Um, there's my surprise, some of you. Kenneth Romero, would you mark out at least or at least be happy if Jeff Midcard crap Jared is dead? First of all, let's get it right. It's that blonde Memphis midcard piece of shit, Jeff fucking Jared. And then, no, I wouldn't be happy if he was dead. I mean, he is a dad. He has kids. He has a family. I mean, he's not Dino Bravo, so I don't want him to be dead. No, that's ridiculous. No, I would not be happy about that. If he went away from professional wrestling and I never heard his name invoked again, would I be happy? Yes. Uh, yeah, no, that's not my style. I don't like uh, people not named Dino Bravo to be dead. <laughs> kind of contradicts myself. Uh, Sean Anderson. If Jeff Hardy didn't leave WWE in 2003, do you think in the years to come he would have been the face of the company? No. He would have been a top guy, but you really are going to put your entire company around Jeff Hardy? Ask Tina how that worked out for them. Just saying. Eddie Caesar, what do you think of Ryback's current booking in comparison to 2012, and do you find him more appealing as a big guy rather than just some bland, boring, and dull power machine he used to be? Well... My thoughts on his booking back in 2012 is why the fuck did they not go all the way with him when they had the opportunity? And then going into 2013, why the fuck would you turn the guy heel when he's finally getting over and it's finally working? You're not even really getting the Goldberg chance now because people are so happy that he's freaking back. And it just pisses me off when I think about how badly they dropped the ball with this the big guy. Um... But yeah, I'm I'm okay with this booking so far. I like what they did on Raw this week. I don't know if it was necessary to do the, oh, he's turning heel, oh, we don't really know type of shit. But I love the fact that he's being featured like a big fucking deal, like he should still should have been already at this point in time. Uh, Stephen Lee Taylor, if John Cena and Batista had not got the push in 2005, who would have? Well, uh, the other two members of the Fortunate Four, Orton and Edge, those would be the first two guys that come to mind. Benedict Infinity Ward, who would win in a WWE match? The w, entire WWE roster with all of them carrying weapons versus John Cena with both of his hands tied behind his back. I mean, not, come on. What type of narrative are you trying to set? How ridiculous are you trying to be? I mean, let's be realistic. Cena's hands would still be attached to his arms, and he'd still have use of his feet, and he'd still have his Superman Jort Johnson flat top powers, so the entire WWE roster would still stand no chance. Just saying. Devon Solo Rager Evans. Who would be a better top guy, Ryback or Roman Reigns? Um, at this particular moment, I actually think Ryback would be. Uh oh, that didn't make her happy. I'm sorry, sweetie. Yeah, I know. Fuck daddy. Da da da. Uh, long term, probably Roman Reigns. But at this particular moment, I'm sorry. I, well, I know you like Ryback too, sweetheart. I'd go with Ryback. I just think Reigns might have more longer term upside. Juan Biz Morales, if you could win tag titles, who would be your partner? If I could win the tag titles with anybody, anybody. Hmm. Probably Road Warrior Animal, especially if I got to wear the shoulder pads that come out to the LOD music. Let's keep it tag team, yeah. And should WWE fire Hornswoggle? No, I don't think they need to fire him. I don't think they need to use him, but I don't think they need to fire him. Mike Fultz, what two wrestlers today could have could have a feud so bad it was good? Who could have a feud so bad that it was good? You could always quip back with John Cena versus Randy Orton, but no, that was still so bad that it just sucked. Uh, who, who are like the two biggest worthless pieces of shit? <laughs> Fucking company. <laughs>
<laughs> one you'll agree with the other one you'll you piss the fuck off at me but fuck you I don't care at this point because it's true I'm a great collie and Tyson kid <laughs> everything about that will be fucked up kid is a small guy who every week they change his fucking shtick collie's this big stumbling bumbling Fucking <laughs> moron character. <laughs> oh my god, it would be so bad if he classic. Especially if they were feuding over Natalia and she started up her fucking farting gimmick again. <laughs> Why did they do that? They don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, Summer, be quiet. <laughs> Anyways, let's see, Ryan Smith. Do you consider the APA an underrated tag team in WWEF history? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very underrated. But then again, I don't know how underrated they are, because I think a lot of people really like the APA. Um, Muchahid. Kilnit? Kilinch? Yeah, okay. I always screw up your name every time. I apologize. Maybe I should just say the MC Kanich. Yeah, there we go. MC Kanich. Uh, what would have happened... To Eddie, if he didn't die so young, do you think he would still wrestle in 2014? I highly doubt he would still be wrestling in 2014. Um, he'd probably be in an agent role, perhaps. And the company could use him in that role. Uh, Kenneth John Delaney, are you going to WrestleMania this year? Uh, I'm out here on the East Coast now. Do I really want to go all the way out to Santa Clara? Uh, Levi Stadium? Uh, probably not. No. Uh, Guy Gorlink, why hire wrestlers if you're going to bury them? Terrific question. One we still don't get the answer to. Why would you bring anyone in and not try to do everything you could to make them a license to print money? I don't care if you have 10 wrestlers or you have 100. You would think you would want to make every single one of them a star. Or at the very least, if you said, okay, we have these 10 guys and we're not going to do a lot with them, but we'll pay them a little bit more than we do other guys because they won't, they won't get over as stars, but they have an importance to us, and we're going to utilize them to help out these other guys that are going to become big stars. But they don't even do that, right, or consistently. Um, but, yeah, Kenneth John Delaney, what will be the next great gimmick we have never seen? Uh, the Socialist. <laughs> A Karl Marx reading, Barack Obama shirt wearing, hammer and sickle waving son of a bitch. The Socialist. <laughs> Stephen Badessa, would you rather shave and then eat Bo Dallas hair or jump off the top of the WCW triple steel cage onto three Japanese tables? Uh... Oh, I might go for the eating hair because you didn't, you you since you didn't say butt cheese hair like ass hair or pubic hair, I will assume hair on the head. You didn't specify any other type of armpit hair or anything else, body hair. I might choose the hair. I believe that. Alberto Torres, thoughts on the low voter turnout in recent midterm elections? Uh really interested in what your thoughts are on the reasons for this. Well, there's no thoughts or specific reasons. Um, young voters and independent voters tend not to turn out as well, and minority voters tend not to turn out in nearly the same numbers of midterms as they do in presidential years. So it's that simple. Uh, turnout traditionally favors Republicans, because you know, Republicans, uh, from a demographic standpoint, tend to take their politics just a little bit more seriously than uh, registered Democrats do, Republicans do anyways. Uh, so they already have a built-in kind of turnout advantage to begin with. Um, I, I, I just don't understand why, if you're not happy with Obama, who has instituted maybe many Republican uh, principles and platforms, frankly, why you would vote for Republicans at a time where they've clearly established that they're no good for you either. If you were going to vote the bums out, then vote the bums out. Don't replace the bums with more fucking bums. Vote for libertarian candidates, independent candidates, write-in candidates. You know, anything other than what this fucking stupid country did. The stupidity of this country, Alberto, just astounds me. Uh, but I'm not surprised by what happened. It doesn't really have a whole lot of bearing on 2016, though, and people that have been led to believe that are being fooled. Period. Uh, so thanks again to you guys that submitted your questions. I'll be back Monday with another Q&A. More content coming up to Survivor Series Review Series and other videos here on OTR Central.